Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide on Dominion, shall we? So, Dominion is a tabletop deck building game that has been out for years. It's you know, one of my favorite uh, deck building games. Um, it, it probably is my favorite, and we own it um, as a family, and we have... I would say five of the expansions, something like that, which sounds like a lot, but there's over the years, there's been a bunch of them that have come out. And I recently saw this is actually, you know, something I slipped my radar that they released this for Steam and for the phone. So you can play this mobile, you can play this on Steam, and it says it's still in early access as of 2021. So I don't really know what that means. But make no mistake, um, this is free to download on Steam for the base game and you can buy the DLC uh, for more money if you get into it and really enjoy it and want to expand uh, the different sets of cards that are available. This game is superb and it's amazing to be able to play it uh, against an AI or you can play online and play others if you are interested in a multiplayer experience. So in this Complete Beginner's Guide, we're going to just fire up a new game. I'm going to play against an enemy AI and just walk you through all of the basics of how to play the game, uh, strategies for the game, the UI in this version of the game, and, and just basically how to understand the victory conditions, the feel of the game, so that you can enjoy this like I have. Because once you understand it, um, it's phenomenal. And then if you obviously really like it, you could buy it here, you could buy the DLCs, or you could even um, buy the physical game and play it uh, with your friends or at your local you know, game shop or whatever. So let's fire up a new game. And when you go to a new game, you can add players. And right now, you know, you can just be player. That's us. And then you can add the easy AI or you can edit this and make it harder. Okay. Medium or hard. And the easy AI is ridiculously easy, but it's a great place for us to start just so we know how to play the game and can really sink our teeth into the mechanics before we escalate the difficulty of the AI. Now, you can add players, okay? And uh, th these ones are locked over here. You need to buy the Intrigue expansion to make a five and six player game. Uh, that was the first expansion that was released for this game uh, on tabletop, if I do believe, uh, if I remember correctly. And then you can click on these empty portraits and you can add more players. So this game can be played like as a duel or you can play it, you know, three to four players or even five to six players if you have the expansion. But for our tutorial, we're just going to play a heads up match so that it's a back and forth and it's easier to understand. But in person, this game really shines when, you know, you've got four people. I like that balance for it. Okay, so I'm going to say play. All right. So I said this was a deck builder. Well, how do we build our deck? What's going on? And what do we see on the screen? So the first thing we want to do is just go to the bottom right corner and click on the hamburger icon and open up the rules. So you can click on the basic rules to get just like a nice built-in breakdown of this game. So it says this is a game of building a deck of cards indeed. The deck is your dominion. It contains resources, victory points, and the things that you can do. So you're trying to expand your kingdom and take control or dominion over all the lands and defeat any contenders. Now you start out with a 10-card deck that, as it says here, you have three estates, which are your victory point holdings, and seven coppers, which is the money that you use to buy things. But what you want to do is build up both of those things, which is your victory point cards and your currency or your money so that you have more money to spend, can buy better cards, make a better deck, and ultimately win the game. So you win the game by having the most victory points when the game ends, okay? Now, what happens is when it... The first player is chosen randomly, all right? And the first player then gets to basically take an action um, and then buy cards. Now, at the beginning of the game, you don't have any action cards. You only have money and victory point cards. 
So all you're going to be doing at the beginning is buying cards from the supply. All right. So I'm going to stop looking at this tutorial. It's actually very, very useful. You can go through all of this to understand um, what's happening in the game, but I'm going to explain it to you uh, from this point on now that we've got an overview of it. So all of our stuff is on the bottom and the bottom left of the screen and the enemies stuff is in this top ribbon okay so let's just explain what we see from top to bottom first of all this is the easy ai that we're playing against this shield with the number three on it represents how many victory points that the ai has right now remember you start with three estates and you can see them right here this is an estate it is worth one victory point and it costs in the lower left corner two money to buy this okay so a victory card goes in your deck and it gives you the amount of points listed here at the end of the game and in the lower left you can see the cost of the card now you start with three of these estates for free okay so one of the things philosophically about the game that you understand is that you want victory points to win the game but you don't want to buy victory point cards necessarily right away because they will slow down your deck. So what does that mean? Every turn, you get to draw five cards. And at the bottom center of the screen, you can see that I've drawn five cards. I've drawn four copper cards and an estate card. So victory point cards don't do anything for you. They just give you points at the end. So you kind of want to move up and to start buying these when the game gets closer to the end, not at the beginning of the game. Because if you do that, then you might draw a hand that's just full of estates, you know, duchies um, and provinces, and then you can't do anything. And that's a shame. So you want to kind of figure out the balance of when do I need to make money? When am I trying to buy action cards? And when do I need to switch over and start buying um, victory point cards? So conveniently, as we see, uh, the victory point cards are all green. All right. So in the base set, there's only estates, duchies, which are worth three and cost five, and provinces, which are worth six and cost eight. So these are the victory point cards. Now, I said you want to kind of buy these when the game gets closer to the end. So when does a game of Dominion end? A game of Dominion ends when the province pile has been completely depleted or three piles from the supply have been completely depleted. So you'll notice that, for example, with provinces in the lower left corner of this smaller card, and you can right click on any of these cards to make them larger. Okay, so you can see the full card, and then you can kind of just move around uh, between the different cards using these arrow keys on the left and right, if you wish, and then just left click away from that to shrink it down. In the lower left, you'll see the cost with the coin symbol and the number on top, and in the lower right, there is a circle that is a color that matches the type of card, and the number represents how many of that there are in that stack so there are eight provinces in a two-player game more players means that you add more to some of the stacks and so it'll change how many of certain cards there are to purchase for example but once this stack goes down from eight to zero the game is over so you always want to keep an eye on how many cards are in the stacks to know what the pace of the game is and when you need to start switching from you know, upgrading your money or upgrading your action cards to make your deck move better or switching to trying to win the game. So they have three victory points to easy AI, which we see here, which is from our estates. Now, remember, they have a 10 card deck. OK, and they've got five cards in their hand, five cards in their deck and then zero cards in their discard pile. So that's what these little icons mean. Now, moving down to the bottom of the screen, we see our own situation. Let me just kind of walk you through the icons before we talk about the supply section of the game in the center. This gear, okay, in the kind of middle left of the screen with this orange banner behind it, 
This number one on top of the gear means I have one action. So you start with the action phase, but I have no actions to play. Action cards are typically cards like this that are white that say action at the bottom. Okay, so if I have one of those, I can play one. All right. I have one buy, okay, and you can left click on this to see what this means, how many purchases the player may make in their buy phase. So for example, right now I have four money in my hand. If I play all of these money, I'll have four money to spend on cards up here, and I can make one purchase. But if I had two buys, I could buy two, let's say moats, for example, because the moat costs two, and I have two buys. But right now, if I had four money, even if I bought this moat, I could only buy this and two of my money would basically be wasted because I only have one buy currently. And then this coin means how much money I have. I have money in my hand, but I don't actually have money to spend until I play it from my hand. And then this is how many victory points I have, which is three, the same as the opponent because everybody starts with the same deck in Dominion. This is how many cards I have left in my draw pile. And then this log in the lower left corner is hilariously the log. So you can click on this and it is very useful to basically help you see a breakdown of what's going on in the game. And all that happens right now is it shows me that I'm um, the player is P, the enemy is E, and it says I drew four copper and an estate and the enemy shuffled their deck and they have five cards, but we don't know what they are. So it's my turn. So what do you do on your turn? All right, first actions, we have no actions. Now it's time to think about playing our treasure cards. So I can just left click on a copper and put it into play, okay? If I put it into play, you'll see that this copper, all right, which if I right click on it, it says it's a treasure card and it gives you one money, which is the big symbol up here. And in the lower left, you can see you can actually buy coppers for zero. They're that bad, all right? And you'll see this number one right here. This is telling you that um, I have one coin now of value, okay? So that means that um, I can buy something that costs one. And with one money of value on the supply up here, now anything that I can afford will become highlighted. If I play another copper, and now I have two money in play, you'll see that these two cards that cost two have turned on and I can purchase them. Now you can click this button to go to take your treasures back into your hand and not play them. Okay, so if you decide you put too much money down or you don't want to play them, you can do that. You can also click this big play treasures button on the right to play all the money in your hand with one stroke. It's very convenient because most of the time you just want to play all of your money. And if you're done, you don't want to buy anything, you can just click and buy and go to the cleanup phase. Now, before we play any treasures, before we buy anything, let's now talk about the supply. So on the supply, we've already talked about the fact that you can get these victory points. Everything out here, you can purchase. You can purchase a curse, although you don't want to, for the most part, it gives you minus one victory point. It's not good. A curse is actually a card that you want to put in your opponent's deck to um, basically subtract from the amount of victory points they can get and just slow their deck down because they will draw this card and it will take up a slot in their hand and they won't be able to use it and it's annoying. You can buy victory points. You can buy treasures. This is something that's very, very um, worthwhile to do is to, for example, start upgrading your money to silver. Silvers cost three money to buy, but when you draw them, you can play them in the um, buy phase and get two money okay so these are way better um, to have instead of you know it just one card slot gives you two money so kind of moving into silver or eventually into gold which is in the base set the premium these cost six money but when you draw it you're guaranteed to have three money to spend so they're so good now all ten of these cards in the main supply are the randomized supply cards that you get in Dominion. So Dominion um, is a phenomenal game that basically is different every time you play it because when you play, you just kind of pick 
different cards that will go in the supply and they go into this section and they determine what kind of a game there will be, what combos are available, um, you know, the pace of it, the feel. So it means that most of the time the games are different, which is awesome. Every time you play, there will always be treasure cards and there will always be victory point cards. Now, some of these may change depending on what DLCs you have purchased, but right now we have um, the base. So if you want to know more about a card, you can just simply mouse over it and then right click it. And for example, Remodel, all right, it's an action card. It costs four money to buy. And if I buy this card, I get this card into my deck, but I don't get to play it the turn that I buy it. It just kind of goes into my discard phase, but it would be a card that next time I draw it, I could use it. And what does it do? It says trash a card from your hand, gain a card costing up to two value or two money more than it. So Remodel is a great card for helping you upgrade your deck from your starter cards that you want to get away from. So for example, if I had Remodel, okay, and um, I played it during the action phase, I could trash a copper, and trash means not that you discard it, but do you take it out of your deck permanently. So you would filter this out of your deck and you would get a card that costs two more than it. Now, right now, there's not many cards that cost two more, but I could trash a copper and get a chapel or a moat, for example, or even an estate if I wanted to. Um, but it's a great way to upgrade some of your other cards. You can even upgrade an estate, okay, by trashing it. You lose a victory point, but then you could buy a card that costs four and then you wouldn't have to, you know, draw an estate. Estates ultimately aren't very valuable um, in the main course of the game. So, you know, at, you start with them, but having provinces, for example, is, is much more powerful. So the remodel is an interesting card that you can go for if you want. But, you know, if you don't want to trash cards, then that might not be where you go. What you need to decide is what you want to purchase and how you want to upgrade. So what I always first do is look at all of the cards. When you're first starting out in Dominion, it's going to take a while to understand what they all do, how they combo, synergize, work together, and how they're going to affect you and the way that the game will be played. Um, so the Council Room, it costs five, but it gives you plus four cards. So you play this card as an action in your action phase. And plus four cards means you get to draw four cards from your deck, and it gives you an extra buy. So you'll get two buys on your turn and four extra cards. It's a very nice card. However, it has a downside that each other player gets to draw a card when you play it, okay? So just be aware of that, but the upside is super high for this card. Then there's Festival, which is five, and it gives you two actions, a buy, and plus two money. This is an amazing card. Now, why is two actions important? As you start buying action cards, you're going to realize I can only play one action per turn. So, like, you know, if I have Festival and Council Room in my hand, um, if I play Council Room first, then that takes up my action and I can't play Festival. But if I were to then play Festival first, okay, it would give me two actions. I could play Council Room, maybe even draw another action and play that. So if you have an action-heavy deck, then Festival is sensational, all right? Then there, uh, it also gives you an extra buy and it gives you two money. So very, very nice. Library is five money and it says draw until you have seven cards in your hand, skipping any action cards you choose to set them aside and discard them afterward. So library kind of lets you shuffle through your deck and scry through. So you keep drawing. And if you get an action card, you have the choice of putting that aside and then eventually putting it into your discard pile and it won't count against your seven cards drawn so you can kind of filter through and try to get the cards you want now you can't set aside treasure cards or victory cards or curses or anything but it is a, a very powerful card now the curse if you if you start this game up your setup will be different than mine because it's randomized and you might not even see the curse as one of your options because the curse as a curse card it only comes into play if there is a supply card that can award curses and the witch is the one that does this so some action cards say action hyphen attack as the witch does on the bottom which means it directly affects negatively your opponent 
Not all cards do this. Uh, in, in many ways, this is kind of a solitaire style game where you're playing and you're doing your own thing and you affect the board dynamically, but you don't usually directly affect your opponents unless you have attack cards, all right? So an attack card says you get to draw two cards and each other player gets a curse. So you are hurting their victory point total and slowing down their deck by putting curses in there. So you could go that route if you want. Then there's the chapel. This is two money and it says trash up to four cards from your hand. This is an uh, awesome card because it lets you, it, it's slow to get going, but it lets you like annihilate copper and stuff that you just don't want. So you can get a really streamlined deck. However, strategically, you want to be careful with a card like this because if you trash all your copper early, you still need copper to buy things. Right, so this is kind of once you have a few gold pieces or something like that, or some action cards that you feel can give you enough money, you could start trashing your bad cards uh, with Chapel to streamline your deck. Moat is an action reaction, and so this is interesting. It's a blue card. There's only a few that are like this, and it gives you two cards, and it says whenever another player plays an attack card, you may first reveal this from your hand to be unaffected by it. So interestingly, you could buy... Um, oh, um, oh, interesting. Okay, I just saw this. There's a big gear on the side of this card, and you can click on it to just set it so you will always reveal this card against an attack and i actually like that um or you can set it to ask me but right now it looks like it's default to always reveal so you can protect yourself against the witch or any card that wants to attack you with the moat very good um for that and then there's the village which just lets you draw a card and have two actions this is great once you have a bunch of action cards but it's not really good at the beginning of the game because you don't have any other action cards to take advantage of bureaucrat okay this is um says for four money it costs four you can gain a silver onto your deck so that means you gain a silver card from the treasure reserve and then you put it onto the top of your deck each other player reveals a victory card from their hand and puts it onto their deck or reveals a hand with no victory cards so this is a, a, an attack card as well and it it works like, well, a bureaucrat. It's hilarious. So what it does is it slows them down. It's like if they have an estate, okay, they have to put it on top, and that means they have to draw it next turn, and it slows them down again. And you're going to get a silver, and you're going to get to draw a silver at the start of your next turn. Guaranteed. And then there's the gardens, okay, which is a victory point card that goes into supply. And just like all the victories, there's only eight of these in a the two-player game. The amount of players dictates how many victory cards and um, sometimes the other amounts of cards. Um, this is worth one victory point per 10 cards you have. So the larger your deck at the end of the game, the more this is worth. But we don't want to buy this up front because it's not doing anything for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click play treasures. We have four money now. And what can we buy? Everything that we can buy now from the supply is highlighted. So I could buy a silver, which is always a, a reasonable choice. But just like in you know Magic or any game like this, you want to try to spend the most amount of resources you can for efficiency. And I'm not really huge on the remodel right now, but I am huge on a bureaucrat because this will just get us silver very quickly. So I'm going to left click on the bureaucrat and I've purchased it. And then now the opponent goes, they go really, really fast. So... Um, you can see their last action in the upper ribbon. It says added a moat. And then you can click on the log to see what they did. And and when you're first starting out, you want to do this a lot. They they played two copper. That's all the money they had. And they um, gain a moat. Now, in the starter deck, you know, you have seven money. So that means they're going to have five money next turn, which it's a bad first turn, but it's a good second turn for them. And now we only have three money. So I'm going to play all these. And I could buy a village. But I still don't have enough actions for that, so I'm going to buy a silver. All right. And now you can see they're going to play all their treasures. And what are they going to buy for five? Um, they added a witch. Well, of course they did, right? So we're going to get some curses unless we buy moats, okay? So at least when you're new at the game, I think it's always worthwhile to just check out the log and see what the computer has done on their turn. So they bought the witch, uh, which... <laughs> that was not intentional but was hilarious is annoying so you know 
they've got this card that's going to give us curses and we just have to deal with that but even though we're going to get curses okay this is why a card like remodel or a card like chapel can be very powerful when somebody is playing curses on you because you can just use the trash mechanic from these to just get rid of the curse so you could trash this curse get your victory point back and get it out of your deck and it's very very nice um, or you can remodel it now re pretty much all you can really remodel it into is like an estate or a copier or, or a chapel or a moat uh, but it's still better than having a curse so that's definitely something that we can consider or we could just ignore it um, it's it's up to us what you want to do is just kind of get a feel for how important it's going to be to actually attend to these curses like how many you're going to get so first of all now we actually have an action we can play on our turn which is our bureaucrat so it tells you right here play action cards that's the first phase of your turn so we're going to play the bureaucrat and we play it immediately and you can look in the log and see um that the bureaucrat goes the enemy revealed a moat okay and we got a silver in our deck so what they did was they revealed a moat to prevent against the attack of the bureaucrat so they did slow down the second part of the bureaucrat but we don't really care because we basically get to play this and gain a silver for free we're going to play our treasures now the action phase is over we have three money that we can use what we can buy is highlighted and i'm actually still just going to buy a silver now you could very well start gearing up and being like you know what i need a chapel or i need a moat but right now i just want money all right and they played a moat to draw cards and they bought themselves a village uh, you could kind of see them pop up before they go if you don't want to look at the log and just see what their turn was and that's what they did now look at this because we got all this silver we ended up this turn with five treasure in our hand, so we can play these. Now that we have five money, we can start buying some really, really good stuff. I don't really want to buy a witch. I don't, I'm not interested in doing that. I want to actually win by just gaining victory points. And I feel like council room, festival, or um, maybe library, but probably one of these two. So festival says, how about two actions, a buy, and two money? And council room says, how about four cards and a buy? And the library gets you, you know, lets you keep drawing and drawing um, until you fill up your hand, which is also very good. But the problem with the library without something like Festival is that it ends your turn in, in the sense of actions. So, like, if you play this, yes, you get to draw a lot of cards and you get to go to the action p potentially that you're looking for, but then you have no actions left. So if you had Village or Festival, you get those extra actions. I'm actually going to buy Festival. I love the card. Wow. All right, this is a good turn for us. We're going to first play the Bureaucrat. And um, let's see what the computer did as a response. Um, oh, they had that moat again. Bad timing for us. But we'll just play the Treasures, and we have four money. So at this point, we can actually go ahead and either get another bureaucrat or pick up a remodel and i'm kind of tempted to buy a remodel to start dealing with cards that i don't want and begin to upgrade so i'll buy one and just show you the mechanic all right they played a moat looks like they bought another moat am i right about that um so they played a moat they drew two cards and they played two copper and bought a moat so at this stage of the game this is a very bad turn for them to only have two money what you want to be doing early in the game is getting trying to ramp up your money production as much as possible by either giving you more cards to draw improving the uh, efficacy of your money by upgrading the money itself to silver or gold or getting cards that generate money for you so that you can buy better things for your deck remember this is a deck building game you're trying to build your deck to make it efficient so you can go through it give you more options and money but then you're also trying to 
build it in such a way that you have more victory points than your opponent. So as you go, you're just kind of looking, and they're not buying any victory cards. They're at three, so there's no sense of urgency. Remember, the game ends if the province pile empties or if three total piles from the supply, including these piles over here, empty. But as you can see, the money piles will pretty much never empty, um, and it's unlikely that the curses will empty. All right, I'm going to play Treasures. What does this do again? This is like for how many cards you have, right? Now, this is worth mentioning that the gardens are very good with a larger deck, but if you're going to go chapel or remodel, things like that, to thin your deck, then the gardens become less powerful. Uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and play treasures. We've got five, and I'm going to go festival. I mean, like all day long, I'm going to go festival. And they played... Uh, let's see. Three copper, and they gained a village. Okay. Now we have... Hey, we have six money. So we're going to play all six. And six money... Uh, my friends and I... There's a joke that goes around our kind of like Dominion community of... Um, you know... Whether or not the best play always with six money is to buy gold... Uh, versus cards from the supply... And, you know, there's there's a lot to debate that, and it depends on what expansions you're playing with. But the, the premise is basically that gold is so good that it's always worth a consideration, and don't sleep on it. Like, it's just a tremendous card to have. You don't need actions, it's guaranteed three money, and that's what we're going to buy right now. All right. Oh, they gave us a curse. How about that? And what did they buy? Um, they bought another village. All right, so they're going for the village pretty hard, getting cards and actions, and they've given us a curse, which is a shame, but it's really not that big of a deal. You could see it goes over here, so you could see how many curses that you have, okay? Um, and it is something that, affects our victory points over here. And it's placed, the curse goes into our discard pile when we gain it. All right, I'm going to play a festival. And we're going to play treasures. And now you can see with our festival, we get two buys, two actions. We don't have any actions, but we get two buys and we have eight. So we could buy a province, which is, you know, amazing for winning the game and every time you get eight you want to consider should i buy a province but we are not going to for the reason that um it's not time to flip that switch yet in my opinion i think we would be better served by purchasing some cards from the supply now what do we want to buy i'm actually going to the remodel is a little slow in getting off the ground, and we have to synchronize it exactly right. Um, and we're, we've got a bunch of silver because of our bureaucrat. I'm going to buy a gold for six, and then a chapel for two. All right, and speaking of the bureaucrat... Oh, they played their moat. Maybe they don't have it in their hand. Let's play our bureaucrat. They revealed an estate, and that goes on the top of their deck, so that's going to slow them down a little bit. And we'll play treasures, and we've got seven money. And with seven money, um, I'll buy another gold. The, I mean, a festival is very, very strong. Uh, or even a council room, we might want one of these, but I'll go with a gold. They've given us another curse. All right, and we'll play treasures, and we are we have five money. I'm going to buy one council room to give us some draw. Another curse. So brutal. All right. So for, don't play. At this point, it's time to play action cards. Do not play your remodel first. Play your festival first. All right. Because this will allow you to have extra actions. So then you could play your remodel if you want. All right. And... If I remodel the estate, I could get another bureaucrat. 
Gardens at this point are worth two victory points, which isn't very good. I could remodel my silver into a festival or a council room or something like that. And to be honest, we should remodel the silver into a festival. That's actually not bad. Remodeling the estate is also uh, a good idea into a garden because it's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's remodel the estate into a garden. It's just a victory point play. It's not helping our deck, um, but it gets it helps our deck in the sense that we get rid of an estate. And um, we'll go ahead and play treasures, and we have four money to spend. And, hmm. I could get another garden if I want to start flipping and getting... Hmm. Or I could buy a silver. I'll just buy a silver. It's great. And we have another buy. Uh, but we're not going to buy anything with just one. We'll end the turn. Now we've got a good turn. Okay. So we can immediately remodel this curse to get rid of it. And we can gain something that costs two. And I will gain an estate. It's not great, but it's a net gain of two victory points. And then now we play our treasures, and we have six money, and I will buy another gold. Ah, here it comes. So they're giving us a curse. They had a big turn. And this is how it goes in Dominion when things progress. You just get more and more action, so the people's turns take longer. Luckily, this is very fast. I believe in the settings, you can assign um, how quick things go. Uh, with the animation speed, you could slow it down if you don't want it to go faster. You could even make it go faster if you want it to go super, super fast. So that's kind of nice. I like the pace of it now. This is fine. Uh, but then again, I'm an experienced player of the game. So if you're newer, you might want to slow it down. But of course, the nice thing is you can always just look at the log to see exactly what they did. And it does a fantastic job of breaking down every single thing that happened. So... Um, we're going to look for cards to either chapel or remodel these curses. So I'm going to play a festival. And I'll play a festival because these are just giving us actions. Now we'll play council room. They get a card. All right. And sadly, we didn't draw what I was looking for right there. But that's okay. So what we're going to do is play treasures. Now we have 11 money and four buys. All right. So that's pretty staggering. And I think what I'm going to do is buy a gold and a library. I want to make sure that I can draw and try to get rid of some of these curses. Okay, so this might be a strange play. I could play all my money and just get a gold piece, but what I'm actually going to do is play my chapel, all right, to get rid of two coppers, and we're going to trash these. They're going to be out of the deck, and we won't get to use them for money this turn, and now we can only you know, buy something that costs four. But the reason I'm doing this um, is because I don't want copper. I don't want to draw them at all. And thinning the deck a little bit um, by taking out something like copper reduces the opportunity. It, it like helps my opportunity cost. It helps me draw better cards, more powerful cards. Now, I could swerve into gardens if I want to keep buying these and build my deck. If I got it to 30 cards um, with gardens, these would each be worth three, which would mean they're cheaper duchies, which is great. Um, but we're thinning our deck, so I'm not, like, super enthusiastic about this. So I think at this point, um, Village says one card and two actions, but we have Festival for actions. We have a chapel and a remodel. I don't want too many of these. I'm okay with honestly just buying a silver and passing. The game is not going to be over anytime soon. All right, so they had a large turn. And now we're going to play our treasures. We've got six, and we're going to buy gold. At this point, what we're trying to do is get ourselves into a position to regularly get eight money per turn so we can start sniping provinces. Okay, we'll play a bureaucrat, and 
Dante revealed a moat. Ouch. Uh, that's okay. Play treasures. And we have three money, so I will buy... Uh, yeah, I'll buy another silver. That's fine. All right. So they gave us a curse, but we're in such a good spot. Look at this. Festival. Play treasure. We have 12 money. I'm going to buy a province at this point. It's time to start moving into the victory situation. I'm going to buy a province. Um, and I'll buy a, a, a garden. They bought a garden. Okay. So the race is beginning to be on. Now this is cool because I can chapel. I can get rid of this curse. And I can get rid of this copper. Now if I get rid of the copper. I'm not going to be able to buy very much good stuff this turn. Um, but. I believe that. It will help me in the... I'm not going to be able to buy really anything this turn if I get rid of it. But I think it will help me in the long run. Because what it will do... Yeah, I'm going to do that. Now, the moat just gives you two cards. But because I have so many festivals and get extra actions, I think I could safely um, play my treasure and buy a moat. Just so that I can... Drawing two is fine. And potentially protect against the curse if I really wanted it. All right, now look how much money we're starting to get. You see our deck getting so much better. We already have six, nine money in our hand. The council room is going to give us an extra buy and four cards. So I'll play this, okay? And unfortunately, um, we can't play the library, but we can play our treasures. And we have 12 money and two buys. So this is a good opportunity for us to just showcase we're going to buy a province and we're going to buy a garden all right now it's not fantastic for us that we're slowing our deck down but look at where they're at they have five victory points and we have 20 we're just trying to start picking off as many of these as you can remember there's only eight of them and if you can think about the calculus that there's two players there's eight of these if we get five or six of these out of eight it's going to be almost, not impossible, but it'll be very, very hard for them with this setup to gain enough victory points to defeat us. So we play our festival first to gain extra actions. Then um, I can remodel my gold if I want into a province, which is actually a reasonable play. Um, but I think I'm just going to remodel. I, I still want to buy stuff with gold, so I'm going to... Um, remodel this copper and get myself uh, an estate and play treasures and we have five money could buy a duchy for victory points um, but I'm going to actually buy uh, a garden because it's cheaper and it can scale up Right now, we have 35 cards, I believe. Actually, if you count, we have 30 in our discard pile. And we have four in play, or in our hand area, and in play, 34. And then this is five over here, so 39. So if we buy this, I think it's going to be worth four points. And we will... And buys. So you see we went to 28 because what happened was all of our gardens increased in value as we got above the 40 card threshold because they're all worth four now. I'm going to play my treasures. We have seven money. Okay. Um, I could buy another garden. That's very tempting. But I think I want to buy gold. I need to be getting provinces. They play the witch, which okay, again, we just don't care. Like it's annoying. But look at the disparity. We've we've been able to pull away. Now, I could remodel right away a silver. And I actually will. Because I can play and get eight and buy myself a province. So I'm going to remodel one silver. And I can get a card costing up to five. We're going to get a garden. We're going to play treasures. And we're going to buy a province. Now we're at 37 victory points. We're going to play festival. Okay, to give us extra actions. We'll play bureaucrat. Whoa, what happened to them? Um, they revealed two copper and three villages. Okay, so they don't have any victory cards to put on top of their deck. 
We'll play treasure cards. We only have three money, which is a shame. But that happens. So what do we want to buy? Um, I'll buy a silver. It's fine. Padding our deck size at this point to try to maybe get to the 50 card to make all of our gardens more valuable is very, very viable. All right. Now it's time to play treasure cards. And we have enough to buy a province. Bam. Okay. So they bought a chapel and... This is the deal, like when you're playing against the easy AI, it's just to kind of learn the game. Their decision making is terrible. Just talking out loud about the game, a chapel at this stage, you won't have enough time to use it for it to be good. But then again, if they only had two money, then that's a disaster. I'm actually going to chapel away this curse, okay? Oh, do I want to do that or do I want to play council room? Yeah, I'm going to play Council Room, because if I chapel away the curse, that's great. It'll give me a victory point, but then I'll only have two money to spend. I don't have any extra actions, which is a bummer, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, and, ooh, we got unlucky anyway. And this is, when you start, this is the whole thing. This is why buying victory cards is dangerous in, in some ways, because you draw them and they do nothing. They give you points at the end, but they slow you down. So at this pivot point in the game, my deck is actually running really slowly, so I can buy something for two. And, um, oh no, I have four. Oh, uh, merciful. I, I drew a silver. Sometimes the way that the game handles your hand size, because it, your hand size in this game can get enormous. There's no maximum hand size. You can, like, draw a million cards if you have actions and council rooms and stuff. But what they do is they make it more concise to display it by putting a counter on how many silver. You see how in the bottom right there's a two? This means that there's actually two silver, and I didn't recognize that visually at first, so I thought I only have one, but I have two. So it means I have four money, which is a perfect opportunity to buy a four-point garden and end the turn. All right, so here we are. Play action cards. Um, we have three money right now. We're going to play a library, and do we want to keep the moat or set it aside? We want to set it aside because we don't want to draw this right now. And we play all of our treasures. We have 11 money, only one buy, but we'll buy a province. We're up to 52 right there. We'll play a festival and we'll play treasures. We have five money. We'll buy the last garden. This is empty from the supply, but now we're up to 63 victory points. Um, and this is because we've gone to 50 cards. So now all of our gardens are worth five. Play treasures. Now we have five. Um, so the question is, at this point, do you want to buy a duchy or do you want to buy a gold? And you see how there's only three provinces left and there's a missing pile. It's time to actually stop. I, uh, a gold is great. Like buying a gold is actually pretty good. But I'm going to buy a duchy just to get the victory points because the game is going to be over soon. I'm going to play treasure, and we have seven money. So with seven money, I'll buy another duchy. And we'll play a bureaucrat. And we'll end the buys. And um, we'll play treasures. We have six money. The way that I scaled our deck and I built it we don't actually have enough money-making opportunities and draws to reliably get eight money. So what this tells us is that our deck is deficient in gold. But the reason I did that was because we started getting close to the end and there isn't, there's not enough victory points on the board for them to catch up. So even if we're buying duchies, which slow us down, they will um, eventually help our gardens and we can just empty this pile and win. And this is a province turn anyway. So we'll buy, a, we'll play a festival, we'll play treasures. We've got 10. Um, so we buy a province. And we have two uh, if we wanted to chapel something away. But I'm just going to buy an estate to rub salt in the wound. And we could remodel, okay, something at this point. Mm, what would I remodel? A garden could only go... None of the... Um, like, an estate can't go to a duchy, sadly. But I can remodel my moat. And 
I could remodel it into an estate, which is like a silly play, but it's just, you know, adding insult to injury for them. And we'll library. Okay. And we'll play treasures, and we have seven money. We will buy a duchy. They're still at five victory points. We're going to play a council room. We're going to play treasures. We got eight province time, and we have an extra buy, but we don't have any money. And we're at 88 victory points. We'll play... Uh, I'll just buy an estate to try to empty the piles. Play. There's two piles empty. Um, oh, okay. And if I said this before, I misspoke. Oh, no, never mind. I didn't misspeak. The province pile is not empty. I just can't buy from it. So there's two empty. So if any of these empty, then the game is over. So I'm going to buy a duchy just to, you know had our lead a little bit play money we've got seven you could look at there's only three villages and three chapels like i could buy these to to slow the game down and um or to try to win more quickly but i'm just gonna buy an estate to just be a jerk and end the turn play that play treasures i only have one money so i'm just not gonna buy anything our deck is like all victory points at this point so you know, you'll have that. Um, I'm going to just remodel my silver um, into a duchy and end. Play a festival. Play treasures. We've got seven. And if we buy this, it will end the game. Um, and we'll end. And it's over. Three piles are empty. The game is over. They got up to six victory points. We got to 109. Even with all of those curses, we won easily. So that's our first game of Dominion. And that explains the rules, the basic concepts, some strategies, tips and tricks, and kind of the flow of the game. It's a fantastic game. However, um, as you can see, like if you boot up the game, it'll be different than mine because your supply will be different. So every game is different. So I might do more of these if you're interested and play against a more difficult AI and we'll get different cards to look at different strategies and combos based on what's available. Everyone, if you, if you have any questions about the game, please post those in the comments below. I hope you found this to be uh, educational and fun. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.